How's it going everybody? My name's Dave Whipple and you're watching Bush Radical. Living off grid is a really simple way to, uh, to really pare down your lifestyle. I find at least I don't really miss electricity or running water or electric lights or anything like that. But uh, one of the things that is a big drawback is showers. But if you want to take a shower, you've either got the option of like one of those camp bag showers or running into town to the laundromat or or just like a bath with a big kettle and all of those work but none of those are ideal so in today's episode what I'm gonna do is build a shower house this is something I've wanted to do on this property ever since we bought it so let me show you what I have already and I'll give you the rundown of what we're gonna do well for starters I have this 8x8 eight eight platform now there's concrete footings for each of the four corners the decking is three-quarter OSB. So this building is gonna have a single pitched roof. It's gonna be six foot wall on the back side, eight foot wall on the front side. I have a bathtub that's gonna go in right here. I plan on putting a vanity right next to that with a sink. And everything is gonna be run off a Zodi pump shower, which I'll show you guys later. So there you can see there's all my cut ends. If we keep going down, you can see my layout marks. Now that I've got all my plates marked, I'll trim off these ends and I'll bring over seven studs for this first wall. Now that I've got my seven wall studs, I'll just make sure that they are good and even on the end. Measure down 93 inches. All right, that's pretty much everything I need for my first two walls, other than the sheeting. I've got my top and bottom plate for the front wall. I've got my top and bottom plate for the back wall. I've got the rest of my studs that go through the wall. What I'm doing here is just nailing together two studs. These are gonna be the, uh, the corners, and it's gonna make a good solid nailer for the sheeting. For you guys that aren't framers or, or carpenters and you're, you're going to be taking something like this on for the first time, uh, when you're nailing on sheeting, these little eight penny coated sinkers are what you want. Now for doing your framing, what you want to use is a 16 penny version. Now this wood is Alaskan native white spruce and it's great wood to work with, but it's, it is a touch on the soft side. So I like to use uh, a 20 penny nail and this is a galvanized nail. A 20 penny galvy will bite into that soft wood and hold. Now I've got the whole box of the wall built with the top and bottom plate and the two double studs on each end. Everything's nailed off. So now I'll fit in my studs. Now I'm ready to do a bit of sheeting. It's time to switch out nails. I'm gonna get these uh, these 20 penny galvies out of my pouch, load up on some of them eight penny sinkers. Nailing off sheeting ain't rocket science. Just get one corner flush, both directions. Tack yourself a nail. You can see our nail was in that corner. Now I need to get this corner lined up. So I'm actually lined up down here in this corner. I'm lined up down here in this corner, but I'm sticking out just a bit. My framing's sticking out just a fuzz on this end. So I'm gonna tap my wall in, tell them flush. And then I'll just pull my wall out down here and tell them flush again. Take that little whoopee out of the wall. Now I can just nail this edge off.
Well, you can see that we've skipped forward quite a ways. There's no sense in showing the same thing over and over. The back wall went up the same as the uh, the front wall. And then I took and, and nailed on this sheet of OSB. Now these corners have been nailed off and everything is square to itself. This wall is rigid, the back wall is rigid, and uh, this sheet of OSB is what's doing that. What I'll do now is make a rafter pattern, and then I will fill in each one of these studs as they need to go in. So I've got my rafter up in position right now, and I've jockeyed it back and forth a couple times until I have split the difference, and I've got about a nine and a half inch overhang on both sides. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark this rafter in place. As opposed to math and geometry, I'm just going to take my board, put it up here, make a mark that's about the same thickness as this gap. And then I'll hold it up against the wall, make another mark. Right there is the cut that needs to come out of that board. Now I'll do the same thing up on this end. Now I'll pull that rafter down, make those cuts, trim them up good, and I'll have a template for everything else. So as opposed to just explaining it, this is what I'm doing. I'm notching out these two by fours and I'm cutting them on the bevel that corresponds with the pitch of the, of the rafters. I'll set them on their studs layout there and I will nail them in up top, just like that. Because I'm gonna be nailing from the back side, I'm just gonna pre-drill a couple holes. That way I can put the nails right where they're supposed to go without guessing. I'll back it up with a sledgehammer. I'll go lay it in. Something like that. Here I'm putting in the bottom plate for my last wall. I'm going to set it in the space that exists, cut it to fit, and then I'll put the studs in one at a time, just like before. So what I'm going to do here is lay out my bottom plate, just like the last one.
I tacked off my piece of plywood flush along the bottom. It's set on a couple nails you just saw me nail. And you can see it's right on the corner. But the farther up we go, this wall is, uh, is out of square with the floor. What we're going to do, we're going to throw a turnbuckle on there and we're going to pull it back to square. We use these turnbuckles all the time in concrete work for straightening up forms. Now that we have ourselves a building, let's install our bathtub and uh, get our shower hooked up, put some linoleum down, and we'll have ourselves an off-grid shower house. couple test fittings here and I should have this drain kit set to about the right size and I'll cut my hole in the floor and install the tub. Now that the tub has the drain kit in it, and I've got my ledger nailed off underneath here, and everything's set in place, I'm going to just sink a couple galvanized nails into these studs, and the head of the nail will hold the tub in, kind of clip it in, lock it into that ledger. From here, I'm going to start working on the supports I need for the tub surround. You can see I've got all my nailers up 
for my shower surround. What I'm going to use is just metal roofing. So right now I'm ready to uh, put my metal in. I've also got to put an on-off valve and just a little bit of tubing in for my pump shower system. I also need to install a shower head. But right now what I need to do is I'm going to get the first piece of metal bent. Not quite sure I'm going to do that, but we'll figure it out. What I did is I bought a 20 foot piece and they have a big set of shears at the lumber yard and I just sheared four pieces at five foot long. Uh, it looks like 30 and a half is going to be this seam right here. And hopefully it seems there's already a seam. I can maybe get that to, uh, to bend. I was going to say, that was a lot more difficult than I would have thought. Whew. Time to set up my shower head. Got myself a 90 degree fitting, myself a shower head arm, some Teflon tape. in this little mounting block right here that way I can put an on off valve here and I've got this stacked up just enough so that the stem of this valve can come through my shower enclosure Seems like I've had a yellow jacket in here all stinking day. I think they got nothing else going on. There we go. There's the line. It's going to run from the pump shower up to the ball valve, up to the shower head. finished tub enclosure. Man, I wish I could show you guys a wider angle, but this place is so small I just can only get so far away. 
I need to install the shower head, clean up the pump shower, and uh, I'll be ready to take a shower. You can tell from my punk rock hair that I need a shower, but we're about ready. You hear the... Now I got this nice linoleum remnant I need to install. It's thick, heavy linoleum. It, it's been rolled up for a few years. So it's going to take a couple days for it to want to lay down flat. Let's put that in now. Well, that's certainly not a professional job. You see, I got a pretty good gap right there. But considering I'm a concrete guy, and I do linoleum about once every five years, I'll call that good. Well, this is my pump shower. This is a brand, it's a Zodi brand. I'm kind of just fitting this together with what I have. It, it actually takes an English thread, which is kind of an odd thing to find. It's a, it's a thread that's not tapered. So I'm just going to, I'm going to tape it up. I'm going to put the hose on it permanently with a clamp. And then we will test out the shower. I've got about two gallons of 60 degree water in here and I've got about another gallon and a half of boiling water. And I'll just mix them together, shake it, and then I'm going to take a shower. So I feel like I've been pig wrestling all day. It's hot, lots of mosquitoes, mosquito dope. It's just a bad deal. Time for a shower. Let's pump it up and we'll test the system. Sweet. Let's see that again, just because it's cool. Boiling water. About one gallon of boiling water, and I got about two gallons of. Uh, Water out of the, the local well, it's about 60 degrees. So, I don't know how that works out mathematically. We're going to try it. There's a lot of water in that hose. Still cold. Warm it up. Not bad. I have to say I should have done this a long time ago. There's been so much work to do here. It's hard to get to a lot of things you want to do. Like fishing, canoeing, loafing. When you live off grid like this, there's, there's always stuff that needs to be done. And uh, getting this shower in, oh man, that sure is amazing. Tell you what, turn up the pressure. I need a few more pumps. I 
that is just out of this world. It's so nice. Oh man, that was absolutely fantastic. Thank you guys so much for watching Bush Radical. If you live off grid or you'd like to live off grid and you just wanted to see at least one way to go about building an off grid shower house with a pump shower, I hope this video has helped you. Thank you guys so much for watching Bush Radical. My name is Dave Whipple. Be radical, eh? See you soon.